There's two kinds of child labor. There's child labor and then there's worse forms of child labor, which is in the ILO convention. So International Labor Organization. And this, this is important because most countries have signed this convention. So they forbid children working in hazardous environments such as being child soldiers, prostitution, lifting heavy loads, working in in unsafe environments, working with chemicals, you know, carrying drugs, doing construction at a young age, carrying heavy, heavy things like you see in the camp. So I like to say that you have to find out why the child is working because they might be working to support their family. Maybe they have a grandmother that can't go out on her own. Maybe they have a disabled parent. So in that situation, you're not going to you prevent that child from working, but you can reduce the risk to that child through using what we call harm reduction by minimizing the risk. And that might entail you know, providing protective clothing, making sure the child can go to school and work, you know, talking with the employer to allow the child to go to school. It could also mean helping the child find a, a safer job. It could also mean, you know, providing psychosocial services at the place where the children are working. You know, we can minimize the, the risk to children. We can't say, we can't stop child labor because sometimes children need to work to support their family, but it's our role to make sure that their rights are met, that they have development rights. They're going to school and getting the psychosocial support they need. They're not doing dangerous work to risk their survival. And, um, and they're not being exploited. Many times children are underpaid or not paid. So, you know, that's the other thing we need to work at. And we also need to ask their opinion. You know, they, we, it's not, we can't tell them not to do it. We have to understand why they're doing it and how we can, what help they would like.